imposter syndrome, and this one is really important and you should listen because I've seen this one before and it's like, yes, yes. Bianca, clap. Uh, can you hear me? Yeah. Cool. So as Katie said, I'm talking about imposter syndrome, which is when we don't internalise our accomplishments, so then we feel like a fraud when we're not actually a fraud. So it's really when we go, oh no, everybody's going to realise I have absolutely no idea what I'm doing. And this is really, really common. So we're going to start with a bunch of questions to help determine if you have it. Move on to how it functions. Talk about some of the consequences and how to deal with it. So we're going to start with a bunch of questions that come from the standard diagnosis questionnaire, which is called the Clance Imposter Phenomenon Scale because impulsive phenomena is what they call in the psych papers. And if you experience any of these, just put your hand up, and if you don't, you can leave it down. Although I have often succeeded on a test or task when I was afraid that I would not do well before I undertook the task. That looks like most of us. I can give the impression that I'm more competent than I really am. Again, most of us. I avoid evaluations if possible and have a dread of others evaluating me. Two hands, yay. <laughs> when people praise me for something I've accomplished, I'm afraid I won't be able to live up to their expectations of me in the future. I sometimes think I obtained my present position or gained my present success because I happen to be in the right place at the right time or knew the right people. I'm afraid people important to me may find out that I'm not as capable as they think I am. Lots of hands. <laughs> I tend to remember the incidents in which I have not done my best more than those when I have done my best. I rarely do a project or task as well as I'd like to. <laughs> Sometimes I feel or believe that my success in life or in my job has been the result of some kind of error. It's hard for me to accept compliments or praise about my intelligence or accomplishments. At times, I feel my success may be due to some kind of luck. I'm disappointed at times in my present accomplishments and think I should have accomplished much more. Sometimes, I'm afraid others will discover how much knowledge or ability I really lack. I'm often afraid that I may fail at a new assignment or undertaking, even though I generally do well at what I attempt. When I've succeeded at something and received recognition for my accomplishments, I have doubts that I can keep repeating that success. If I receive a great deal of praise and recognition for something I've accomplished, I tend to discount the importance of what I've done. I often compare my ability to those around me and think they may be more intelligent than I am. Uh, sorry. I often worry about not succeeding with a project or examination, though others around me have considerable confidence that I'll do well. If I'm going to receive a promotion or gain recognition of some kind, I hesitate to tell others until it's an accomplished fact. I feel bad and discouraged if I'm not the best or at least very special in situations involving achievement. So most of us had our hands up for most of those. So it looks like most of us have some imposter syndrome and it's really common, so that's expected. And a lot of different people can have it. It was initially discovered in high achieving women, but it's since been found in all kinds of other groups, so anybody can have it. It, although it was initially discovered in students and academics, it's been found in other groups too. It's possibly higher in women, but there's research going both ways on that, so I'm not really sure. It could be higher, it might be equal. And it can be higher in some other groups that have particular stereotypes and make it more difficult for them to internalise their accomplishments, like African American women. Also higher in minorities in their field, so in this case women. When people go into a new endeavour, it tends to increase. I mostly got over it in a work context, and then when I've done other things, volunteering, it all came flooding back, and I got it right back again. 
And so what are some of the characteristics of it? There's a cycle that we tend to get stuck in. Where, does this have a pointer? Cool. So when we receive an achievement-related task, it leads to feelings of anxiety, self-doubt, and worry associated with it. And we deal with that in one of two ways. So we may over-prepare and do heaps of work and make it absolutely perfect. And then we succeed and get accomplishment and a temporary feeling of relief, positive feedback, and then we discount the positive feedback because we assume it's just because we put in so much effort. Or we can procrastinate and do it at the last possible moment. So maybe you're a student that leaves your assignment to the last night and stays up till 5 a.m. working on it. Then you still go well, you get feelings of relief, positive feedback, and then discount it because you just got lucky. Anything but attributing it to yourself, that's the common ground. And then that leads to you feeling fraudulent, more self-doubt, and higher chance of depression and anxiety. And this feeds right back into the next time you get an achievement-related task, and you just keep going around and around, unless we break out of it. So we all, we'll always attribute, if we're experiencing this, we'll attribute our successes to outside factors. It might be luck, it might be our colleagues, anything but thinking we're capable. And if it's a failure, we'll attribute it to our characteristics we can't change. So we might assume that we're stupid and that's why we failed, rather than looking at what the real cause could be. And for women, this can be, viewing ourselves as phony can be consistent with the societal view of us being less competent, which we could have been told for, from a young age, and this can be worse for some other groups like African American women. And we also tend to believe that intelligence is fixed, rather than malleable, so we might, from our failures, think that we're stupid and that we cannot improve or fix it. And we tend to struggle to cope with failure, reacting quite helplessly and blaming ourselves and withdrawing, and trying to project this heavily idealised self-image that we absolutely cannot live up to and no one can live up to, which we will fail to uphold, and we can get far too dependent on external validation, so struggle when that goes away. And because we're just dismissing all of our successes, it doesn't help at all. Every, for every success we get, we'll just focus on the difference between what we achieved and what we wanted to. And that's what'll stand out, not what we did achieve. And we'll just keep denying our competence and discounting the price, so it doesn't help us get any better. And we tend to have a desire to be the best. We may have been the biggest fish in a small pond in something like school. And then we go on to a bigger pond like university, and there are lots of other people, so there are definitely going to be people that are better than us at some things, and we'll pick heavily selected samples to compare ourselves to. And when we're not the best, we may think that we're stupid, failing to recognise that there's a huge middle ground between the best and stupid. Most people are in that middle ground. We're probably in that middle ground. And when we're making these comparisons, we'll compare ourselves to other people's highlight reel. And we'll pick very select samples rather than comparing to the average. And we tend to feel some fear and guilt around success and have trouble trusting others. And we'll tend to have low involvement with other people in women, low play in everybody, low impulsivity in women but high in men, low need for change in women, and high need for change in men, and low need for order in men. And these problems can go right back to childhood. So there are two main cases in childhood that can contribute to this. In the first case, which is more common for women, we may have been told that our sibling or our close relative is a smart one. They're the one that's going to achieve academically. And we're maybe the more sensitive one with more social skills. So then when we do achieve say, academic success, something that involves intelligence, we struggle to internalise it because we've been told that we're not intelligent from such a young age. In another case, we may have been told that we are so perfect and success should come so easily to us. And then when reality strikes and things aren't always easy and sometimes we fail, we can struggle to cope with it because we've been taught to value success with very little effort. And feedback that's given to kids can also have a big impact. So if they're always given positive feedback, regardless of the actual outcomes and how well they do, they learn that the positive feedback is worthless because they always get it and they just learn to ignore it. However, if they never get positive feedback, they can just feel that nothing they ever do is good enough. So that also contributes and we need a middle ground. And family conflict can really add to it and a lot of people with imposter syndrome 
do have a much higher need to please others in their family and live up to this heavily idealised self-image to get approval that's probably never going to come. And it's higher in individuals with achievement orientation and neuroticism and perfectionist expectations over themselves. And there's research going both ways with conscientiousness, and I'm not sure which is correct. And some work environments can make this worse. So it hasn't been studied in technology, but we can draw some conclusions on what has been studied. So highly competitive and stressful occupations like academia are supposed to make it worse. And maybe the, high, the peer review that's present in academia and also for developers could be a contributing factor. And it's higher among non-ongoing staff. And although it hasn't been studied in tech, it's higher in systems librarians and other types of librarians. And they have higher technical knowledge expectations. They have to deal with more technical change, and they can very quickly feel outdated, which sounds very familiar for developers and very similar, with so many emerging technologies and pressure to keep up with it, and a tendency to focus on what other people have learned rather than what we have, when it's impossible to learn all of the things we have to pick and choose. And other groups with negative competence stereotypes can have a much harder time of it. So African-American women are far more likely to have it because they have to deal with extra negative competence stereotypes. And for them, it's been found to be really important for them to establish really internalised self-worth and reliance rather than being dependent on others, which I think is more widely applicable. And group counselling with other African-American women is, is the most effective way for them to deal with it, which I think the rest of us can learn from. They found that they were more comfortable with people like them and they could share more strategies with people in similar situations and expose the ridiculousness of each other's imposter syndrome and support each other. And there are theories that it's more of a self-presentation strategy than actually failing to internalise our accomplishments. And it could be to avoid negative interpersonal consequences for future failures or, in some cases, to avoid negative interpersonal consequences for your successes. And we only tend to express lower performance expectations when other people are going to see it, as correlated with other impression management strategies. And this would make a lot of sense for women in technology to do, as we're walking a tightrope between being seen as too masculine or too feminine, whereas if we're on the too masculine side, which I tend to be perceived on, we're likely to be labelled very pushy, bossy, bitch, etc. And if we're on the too feminine side, we'll not be taken seriously, dismissed and ignored. And as achievement pushes us in their perceptions further towards the masculine side and confidence does the same thing, we can end up slamming right over to that side and having negative consequences for it. So I found that if I achieve something and I voice that I'm accepting it, I'll often be rejected and put down. And because they don't like me being that confident, but if I keep it to myself, then I don't get that. So that may be a factor in it, us using that as self-presentation, so I'm trying to, when I'm around people that'll do that, just keep it to myself rather than put myself down, and then they don't put me down and reject me. It's their problem that they're doing that. It's nothing to do with me. And there are some behaviours that we can engage in that can preserve this. So if we're using intellectual inauthenticity, where we're choosing not to reveal our ideas and opinions, we never get to find out how good those ideas and opinions are. We never get feedback on them. We never get to discuss them. We never get to try them. So we can never find the good things in those ideas and opinions. And if we're remaining silent in the face of the opposing view, we never get to discuss them. We can also use charm to try and be liked as well as respected intellectually, which we may find someone we want to get approval from that we respect and then try and charm them. And we may get both approval on a personal level and on an intellectual level. But often if we have that approval on a personal level, we dismiss the approval of our accomplishments because we assume that it's just because they like us. And we, will we won't accept the positive feedback from them. And we can also avoid displays of confidence for fear of rejection, sometimes well justified, as I talked about in the tightrope section. And what are some of the consequences of this? So we can end up with poor mental health, 
bouts of depression and anxiety, emotional exhaustion and burnout, general psychological distress, low self-confidence, lowering our job well-being satisfaction and from their performance, lower self-efficacy, uh, and there are some ways we can use to cope. So the most effective thing is generally mentoring. Our mentors can, by discussing it, help normalize our feelings. They can provide emotional support and they can challenge us to accept positive feedback. But on the negative side, they can provide a target for unfair comparisons. Positive reinforcement and really challenging people to accept positive feedback and trying to accept it rather than reject it or attribute it to other factors. And something I really liked was when a group I volunteered with at the end of a project put a whole lot of, we all wrote a whole lot of little letters to each other with some feedback about how we went. And then we got them at the volunteer party. And getting this big bunch of letters that said pretty much the same positive things helped me see that everyone thought the same thing and helped me see the patterns there and helped me to internalize it. And having that record helps me come back to it and accept it. Identifying the feelings is the first step to changing. Giving yourself a reality check when you notice yourself engaging in these and differentiating between how you're feeling and what the reality is. Some people like to use humor or distract themselves and social support can be really helpful like though that group therapy for the African American women, people in a similar situation. You can relate to each other better, you're more likely to speak honestly to each other. And reducing your dependency on the external validation is really important because when it's not there, you still need to be able to feel okay about yourself. Oops. So what can we do? Talking about it would be the top thing I'd suggest. So on the break, you can talk about it, talk about it with your friends, talk about it when you get back to work or with your friends. And being aware when you show it and also when other people show it and helping people realize when they're showing it. I originally had such bad imposter syndrome. I thought that other people had it, but I was right. And I needed someone to tell me that I actually did have it. And that meant I had a lot of imposter syndrome. <laughs> and I also felt like someone more qualified should talk about imposter syndrome. <laughs> and challenging people to accept the positive feedback. So if you're congratulating someone on something they did and they go, I just got lucky or it's because this other person helped me, point out what they did and what characteristics they have helped achieve the outcome to help them accept it themselves and internally attribute it as opposed to palming it off. And getting external perspective can help a lot, but it's important that you get perspective from someone that will judge you fairly rather than someone that will be unfairly negative because that will just make everything worse. And I'm not going to have time to take any questions, but you can find me in the breaks or email me.